welcome back to another traders podcast episode my name is jacob this is trade happy a platform for traders around the world to be happy and consistently profitable and in today's episode we have a trader um, who has his own community he has i think around sixty thousand followers on instagram as well um he posts loads of educational content on his instagram does youtube does loads of stuff um, it was a really really good chat we spoke about a lot of things to do with trading uh, his analysis his strategies but then also the overall industry the overall trading industry as a whole and what he would change it was very very interesting um, so if you are interested in that then make sure to stick around if you're not following trade happy on spotify either uh, go ahead and do that i will leave a link in the description for that um, spotify so yeah, all the all of these episodes will be live on Spotify very very soon. Um, so make sure you go and follow over there because um, yeah, you'll be able to listen anywhere. Then you won't need YouTube. So I hope that you have a good day. I hope that you enjoy this episode. Um, if you do, comment below what you kind of learned from this episode or found interesting, and I will see you in the next episode. So for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, um, so my name's Idris. Um, I am a retail trader. I started trading when I was kind of um, mid, keep saying mid 20s, but that's kind of people think that's kind of 25. I mean, like in the middle of my 20 years of age. <laughs> so I've been trading for about five years um, and I'm now typically around kind of 12 months to become profitable, 12 months to become, become break even, sorry. And then a few months after that, I then start transitioning to becoming profitable. I then started to kind of document some bits and pieces on Instagram. This is going back about three, three and a half years ago now. Um, and kind of naturally it's for journaling trades and then all of a sudden like I was getting a bit of interest so I formed a business called Trade Simple FX um, and then again fast forward another kind of year or two down the line um, there was a bit of a demand for kind of services and information and commentary and bits and pieces so one thing led to another and then um, the kind of business side of things unfolded so I've kind of got a small 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 company called Trade Simple FX where the motto of the brand is to make trading simple. Okay amazing so how did you actually find out about trading like where did you did you google it did you hear it from a friend yeah so from a friend i had a friend called uh, matt um, so we went to sixth form together and um, he basically got me into it i made quite a bit of money to be honest at the time it's quite a bit of money now um it's kind of i don't know like I mean, everything's relative isn't it like everything's yeah. relative so at the time it was quite 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 a nice kind of sum i think i was working um weekend work so i was probably only making like 200 pound 200 pound a month or something two 300 pound a month um, and I made about three hundred and fifty pounds off uh, of one of these cryptocurrencies, and that was in about half an hour. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> like that to me, obviously, is like almost a month's wages. So I was like, "This is really, really good, really um, kind of quite interesting." And um, I didn't really do anything for a little while after that. I blew the money, so I blew the three hundred and fifty pounds that I made quite shortly after. So I think probably the following week, actually. And mm. then um, I was kind of a bit like, "Okay, well, there was good potential there. I've obviously made quite a bit of money in quite a short period of time. Is there any way that I can sustain this?" So I looked into it a little bit more, done loads of reading and stuff. But I didn't really have the income or the finances or the knowledge or any kind of more information where I could look to kind of develop my trading. So I was just watching a few videos and that. And then, um, and then um, yeah, all of a sudden, like, I thought I'd invest a little bit more time into it. Um, and then at the time, this is now fast forward and about a year down the line, I then started it as a part-time degree. So kind of in between that, I didn't really have any interest in the degree and I was actually studying now kind of FX and different industry markets and stuff hmm. um, during my time at university. Um, but like I say, it was only a part-time degree and off the back of that, I then started to, I was, I was one of those people that kind of jumped between strategies. And if I could tell anyone anything now, I'd just say, look, really try and knuckle down on something very specific um less is more and just really focus on something so don't be a jack master of jack of all trades master of none you really want to master something and it doesn't have to be anything too complex you just have to have exceptional kind of risk management and position management and um and, and go on that basis but um a lot of um trading i think boils down to um self-discipline and kind of fighting human nature and having like a, a strategy in place to to um ensure that you are disciplined and you're not going away from your trading plan and all these kind of bits and pieces yeah, that, that's something that obviously a lot of traders struggle with, with the whole yeah. going from strategy to strategy. So I guess, how long did it take you to stop doing that and actually stick with one strategy? So 
recently, uh, you'll probably most 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 traders who, uh, you probably speak to will probably say this, but um, everything's always being slightly adapted, slightly tweaked, right? So mm. um, now, if you obviously follow my Instagram and my different videos and YouTube and stuff, you'll notice everything is super super plain, like super super plain. So I can see exactly what's going on. I've only kind of really recently developed this within the last kind of 18 months. Before, I was quite big on the whole retail trading between the um, trend lines and bits and pieces like that, EMAs and indicators. I'd never got the knack of that, never really understood that. Always found it hard to uh, quantify things, always ha- found it hard once I was in a position to understand where I'm going with that position. Um, and yeah. now, the way I do things is, or the way we trade and the way I kind of almost teach people to trade is trading between the zones. And that's what we've called our course because. The zones are horizontal. Um, Confluences are based on whole numbers, psychological numbers, key levels, uh, breakout highs, yearly highs, and all that kind of stuff. Very powerful, precise zones. Um, And everything's easy to quantify. Your your take profit's easy to quantify, your stop loss, your entry price. Uh, In terms of position management, that's really easy as well because you can identify just by looking left on recent price that you can see, okay, right, the supply there, demand there. And I think trading is about kind of trading between the kind of equilibrium price, right? So naturally, I think price wants to snap back to a a mean best value, where obviously if you're a technical trader, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, uh, it's going to take something big, something on a big macroeconomic front to change a trend or set new highs or drive markets on risk event headlines or something like that, right? So if you're just trading purely technicals, you'll find there's not going to be massive breakouts. There's not going to be forever lasting trends and stuff. But if you kind of scale out and trade the four hour like we do, then everything is just going to pop between from zone to zone to zone to zone to zone. You're going to have fake outs. You're going to have um, areas where you're going to kind of sell off and you think there's a change in trend. But then all of a sudden it's just a wick reversal or something like that. And then you actually wait for the closure and you're still within your zones. So that 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 to me now just makes absolutely lot. So obviously that's a very brief um, kind of explanation of it. But yeah. when obviously we dig into more detail and go through like one to ones, and we've got a coaching program at the moment with our with our members and everything, and we just try and make things sound and seem logical. So as long as people can kind of almost uh, kind of understand and see the logic behind the decisions we make and the processes we kind of follow, then they'll get on quite well with our strategy. If people can't really understand and uh can't really relate then what we normally do is try and get people onto a consultation so um sorry to answer your question um, i was jumping around between strategies for probably the first kind of two years because i think what people naturally want to do is soak up all the information they can get right they want to try and oh uh, yeah i've heard about this i've heard about this so they try and like i say jack of all trades master of none whereas really understand the basics the first thing i feel people should learn is money management risk management um and choosing uh, kind of I say high probability setups, but a combination of high probability setups as well as as well as um, decent reward to low risk setups, right? Because that's equally as important. Hmm. So, I mean, I was jumping around strategies for about two years and then I kind of worked more from zones. And then again, fast forward another two years. So for the last kind of 18 months, I really feel like I've kind of just really knuckled down. The more money I trade with, the less stress it puts on me. So, for example, now I've got more capital, I don't need to trade as much because I've got more capital, I'm returning uh, more money, but I'm using the same risk management, I'm using all the same procedures I was using when I was trading with, say, 15, 20k. So, the only difference is I've got more figures to trade with, I've got greater capital to trade with, right? So, naturally, that helps people take a step back and think, right, this is what I want to do, I've got more time to think, and you're not chasing the profit loss. People should always work in percentages, it's really, really important. Yeah, one of the previous uh, podcast guests said something very, very similar. Um, he was struggling to make money with a thousand, and yeah. then when he had a hundred thousand. He said it was easier um, yeah. because he was, you know, he was trying to push that one thousand pound account too much. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily. Say, to be fair, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say, I'd say, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened with me. So I blew four lots of one thousand pound accounts, and then on. Oh, sorry, no, I didn't. I blew three, and then on the fourth. Um, that was when I was kind of transitioning and I understood like, I'm actually kind of breaking even now. I'm not making those silly mistakes that I was making previously, doubling down, revenge trading, uh, kind of entering impulsively without calculating risk, putting nominal lot sizes on instead of calculating them. Um, and then I managed to be really specific, really kind of regimented, um, only took one or two trades a day. So maybe five to 10 trades a week. Um, and things were going much better because I had more time to learn about those trades and follow them more specifically as opposed to jumping in and almost gambling on them, not really learning from anything, not really being able to back test and update anything and all that kind of stuff. Um, with regards to uh, the person you interviewed previously, I had a similar experience, but 
I was, I was, um, I was managing that one thousand pounds, and over three months, when I was kind of transitioning to becoming kind of break even to slightly profitable, and I say slightly profitable, it's very marginal profits. I then said, right, it's been two months now, two three months, where I've actually kind of, you know, I've seen, I've seen one on break even uh, for a couple of weeks, and then I might make a small profit, and then I might take a small step back, but generally, I'm not actually losing money anymore, and I'm ever so slightly in the blue. So then I dumped in, I think it's around 15 or 20K. And um, I was then, again, I just took a massive step back and I said, right, 0.5% per trade. I was risking a max of say uh, 50 to hundred pounds a trade. Um, and things were then, I was getting better returns, returns I wanted to see, if that makes sense. Mm, Obviously yeah. when you're trading with a small account, you know what I mean? You, you, people hate to work in percentages. They want to work in profit loss because they want to see some kind of um, some output from what, what they're kind of investing in, right? They want to see some something that will pay for bills or leisure spend at the weekends and all that kind of stuff. So I naturally found, yeah, to a degree, but at the same time, if you know you can't manage a thousand pounds, there's no point in taking, I told, for example, I had a mm. um, consultation with someone yesterday and he said he's got six grand in his account. And um, um, he said he's got six grand in his account. And I said, well, are you profitable? And he said, no. And I said, well, you may as well kind of withdraw that money because whilst that money's in there, you're exposed. So 500 pounds, 1000 pounds, that's enough to ensure you can manage your risk well um, and follow like a decent system, a decent protocol and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if you've got all that money there, it's exposed, you're vulnerable, uh, you might be liable for doubling down, you never know what could happen. Um, whereas if you work in percentages over the kind of two, three, four months, then if you see growth, if you see consistency, then then deposit more money. But like I say, whilst it's there and you know you're not making money and you don't really have confidence and trust your analysis and yourself, then there's no point in having too much money in there. Focus on percentages. Yeah, 2% a week of a thousand pounds is only 20 quid, 80 quid a month. It doesn't sound like a lot, but at the end of the day, it's a phone bill, isn't it? And then you True. think, okay, right, well, let's now dump in uh, 10,000 pounds. So you've been saving this whole period of time from your uh, kind of income. You've been saving money, saving money, saving money. Uh, you've been compounding small wins. You've been withdrawing that. So using 1,000 pounds as zero. Again, I always encourage people to kind of make weekly withdrawals just so it doesn't seem like dead money. Um, each to their own. Some people like to compound accounts, but I sometimes find, and speaking with other people, they sometimes find that they might, uh, they might, for example, it seems like dead money. They might go from a thousand to maybe fourteen hundred quid, and then all of a sudden the next week, because it feels like dead money, and they haven't technically lost anything if they go back to a thousand. It's the wrong way of thinking about things. Like yeah. it all contributes to developing psychology, doesn't it? Like psychological control, right? So the whole trading is a psychological warfare with yourself and your money in the markets, right? So. Um, I always encourage people to follow a routine and procedure as if you were a full-time trader. So like I say, using a thousand pounds is zero. So go from a thousand pounds to, I don't know, uh, 1200 pounds at the end of the month or something, and then make a withdrawal of 200 pounds, save that money as well as your income. And then once you've done, I don't know, three, six months of consistent profits, then add another zero to your trading account. So all of a sudden that 80 pounds a month you're making from 2% a week on a thousand pounds is now 800 pounds. Um, and now that's like, I don't know, that's a mortgage for some people. That's a nice car. Do you know what I mean? And that's how I encourage people to think about things. Yeah. So how do you think that sh traders should um, define success? Uh, control. Control. So even if you're not profitable and you're learning, I know it's a hard thing to stomach, but even mm. if you're not profitable, but you're still learning and you're still in control of your capital, uh, you're still moving forward, you're still making the right procedures and decisions, it is a very, there's a very fine line between becoming uh, from non-profitable to profitable. And there's an even finer line from becoming break even to then slightly profitable. And then kind of maintaining those positive, um, those positive habits. If you're good at that, if you're self-disciplined, if you know you can step away from a trade um, and kind of uh, be in control to observe that trade. Um, for example, sitting on the sideline and watching it play out. Yeah, if it plays out and you would have made some money and it worked out, that's, that's a win. That's success because you know your analysis has played out at the same time you've had the discipline to sit on the sideline uh, if you for example if you lose a trade um, and you sat on the sideline you would have been like okay great it was a good decision to sit out um, i've lost that trade i would have lost some money i haven't um, and let's dig into it let's learn from it and again i think success boils down to just being in absolute control to be honest uh, mm. less is more so the less you focus on or the less you have on your kind of plate, if that makes sense, the more you can focus on it so you can dig into it more. For example, uh, some people trade five, 10, 15 positions a day when they know they're not profitable. There's no point in trading so much when you know you're losing money because you want to be losing money slower, but digging into those trades more so that you can obviously identify where you're going wrong. So um, yeah. I think that's what I class as success. What about you? Um, yeah, I would, I would pretty much say the same thing. 
Um, mm. I think that obviously success for, for some people is going to be different to others, but um, it's good to kind of get a perspective from different people about around what they see as successful because some people would obviously say I want the money some people would say I want to see growth on the account some people would say yeah. I want to be a better person you know there's, there's so many different yeah. things and obviously yeah. that, I think trading obviously it goes into all those things because yeah. to be profitable if you're not profitable you have to be better yourself yeah. Um, so yeah I, 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 I agree I agree. I think I think it's like the bigger picture, isn't it? The bigger picture. Obviously, um, people feel like it, sometimes you know you'll have four, five, six trades on the balance that you're winning, and they're getting say yeah. more than one to one. They're getting one to two, and you feel like you're invincible. Um, but having that control to be like, okay, well, I've had a winning streak. There's no doubt at some point over the next kind of win a uh, week, month, I'm going to have a losing streak. So, almost being prepared for the future outcome is mm. also really really important. I feel because you. You, you you have to take the highs with the lows, you know what I mean? It's with trading, like, it really is like that. Like, you do have, I'll, I'll go some weeks. So, for example, I think uh, towards the latter part of last year, I had two, I had a break-even week and a losing week. And then that's when you really question yourself. But then, obviously, you've got, uh, for example, you people have trading journals. Uh, people know that they make weekly withdrawals or monthly withdrawals. And you know it's not about the three or six trades that I took over the last couple of weeks that weren't profitable. Now I'll take a step back and think, right, 30, 40, 50 trades, then average them and then see where, where you've come from. Um, and that's obviously, that's, a, that, that's where you need to kind of think, think, think long term. Don't think short term. Don't be influenced by short term outcomes. Um, don't be, uh, don't kind of be sat on your high horse after like three wins on the trot and then kind of uh, kick yourself when you've lost them. It's just part of the game, isn't it? Swings and roundabouts and all that. So Yeah, I, I always say um, to traders that they should focus on the process and not yeah, the result. Absolutely. Um, absolutely that's why i kind of answered that question with regards to success the success will come the profits will come success is understanding the procedure and having the right mindset from the start and then i feel i feel everything will, i feel everything will fall into place after that the people that i kind of speak to and work with and teach normally straight away you get a good understanding i spoke to james yesterday he's the bloke that i said look withdraw the money um, leave a little bit in there so you can still follow the process correctly and do everything like you would do with a bigger account and straight away i, I feel like he's going to he's going to be able to like a really good trader. You can get, you can get the, uh, the kind of vibe of someone straight away, can't you, with their kind of, their, how, how, their, their, their maturity and their outlook and their mm. expectations more than anything. Um, normally the people that are kind of financially stable already will do better and perform better because it's just another one of those things, not muddying the water to, um, to kind of put them off their target. So once they're, when the, when, one, if they've got a bit of time and they're consistent and they're actually interested, and then two, if they're already financially stable and they don't need um, another source of income naturally um the industry is quite corrupt where people say look join our group you'll make an, a, a second income and you'll do this and you'll do that and you uh, we promise you this and we promise you that whereas realistically it's going to take you i mean i i feel like i've done well between kind of 12 months and 15 months that was how long it took me to become profitable i know people that have been trading for two two and a bit years and they just break even um i know people yeah. that have kind of claimed they're profitable within six months so everyone's different but if you can speak with people and share ideas and share experiences, then the people that are new to it, they can obviously almost fast track themselves because they've got someone to, someone to um, almost tell them what's to come. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But I think um, obviously because everyone learns at different paces, don't they? So um, absolutely, I've I've spoken to traders before who have been trading for eight to ten years mm -hmm. and still not profitable. Really? Um, yeah, it's. I think it's because obviously the people that they surround themselves with and all that kind of stuff but it's also that kind of learning uh they mm -hmm. might not be learning it the right way i don't know but yeah 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 you know, i mean it's, it is what it is um i also yeah. want to ask because obviously you touched on the industry a little bit there um yeah. if you could change one thing about the current trading industry what would it be uh to have Obviously, at the moment, every every, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is providing signals. Obviously, under the uh, under the UK kind of FCA jurisdiction, right? To provide financial advice, signals, and the like, um, you should obviously that's generally classed as financial advice, right? Um, it's a bit of a grey area. People say it's market commentary. People say it's this. People say it's that. Mm. I feel like if that could be tightened and there were more restrictions on that, then that would kind of give the industry a better name. 
Uh, when I first started trading, I was like, okay, like I, I love the status of being a trader when I first started, even though I wasn't making money, that I love the status of it. I like I love to tell people this is what I'm doing. Now I don't actually like telling people that's what I do <laughs> because of all the how, how corrupt the industry is. And like I say, yeah. every every Tom, Dick, and Harry with their um their 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 bits and pieces on holidays and stuff, and there's no value there. Like I don't I don't there's no value, do you understand? Like if, if people get like straight away you can get an impression of someone that's kind of fairly honest and transparent as opposed to someone um that as soon as someone says bd swiss i'm like okay well you know what you know what's going to follow after that don't you so um you, you get a free month I and mean, it's just so misleading i wish there was some, some some sort of kind of tighter tighter restrictions on obviously i can't i am almost i'm not one of those people because i don't provide signals um the way i provide my services is uh, we've got like a group we've got like a uh, we don't provide we, we class ourselves as like an educational platform right and everything's based on kind of previous previous um, kind of experiences we don't promise anyone anything we don't say sign up to our group you're going to make this you're going to make that uh, we give people realistic targets we give people affordable um, kind of content um, and the reason for our group personally is trading's a lonely journey isn't it um, it's a lonely journey especially if you're sat in your in your office or, or you've got an office in a town or a city or, or whatever it is uh, it's a lonely journey so if you've got those people to kind of not hold your hand but kind of kind of take the journey with you it's almost a, it's a better group isn't it or it's a better kind of mm. place to be whereas i think the industry at the moment i think a lot of people are just providing signals recycling content um i've had my content stolen so so many times and just replicated and resold and i've got trademarks and copyright symbols and bits and pieces on my on my graphs and but people just uh, they don't care they're just short-term financial gain they're up they, te- they, they obviously like provide signals at their own risk and bits and pieces and for someone to buy, provide direct signals um and kind of mislead other people for their own financial gain is just outright wrong hmm. like it's just outright wrong um obviously there's various different kind of uh, verification things that people can have they can have uh, i think it's blue blue fx my fx book as well um and i appreciate that if, if someone's looking to provide direct services such as signals then people that are directly putting their money into something that um they want that kind of they want that clarity they want that com- kind of confirmation that there, there is kind of some some sort of credentials here that this person is making money and i can follow their signals but again under the fca jurisdiction obviously it's a bit of a gray area you need to be registered and licensed with them and then obviously that follows certain kind of procedures and application process of financial input and all that kind of stuff and yeah the average joe that provides bd swiss signals in groups and commentary and bits and pieces then obviously there's a big group in southampton at the moment isn't there i think i think they've all kind of uh, been sussed out and um, now i think they are into drop shipping so you see their sponsored ads <laughs> everywhere on drop shipping don't you the what's without calling names out i don't know if they've watched this but um, that was quite funny so um, yeah interesting stuff but yeah i mean that, well, 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 sorry go on. yeah what about you I was just gonna say that's pretty much what I was I was gonna say anyway. Um because I was it's just so I, I, aggressive, isn't it? It's just such aggressive marketing, like forcing people to do stuff. It's just outright yeah. wrong. I mean I, I stream uh every day in the morning. Okay. And in, in today's session we, we spoke about this. Yeah. Um and I try not to get too annoyed about it. <laughs> um but um like there's just you know, the renting out of the Lambo mm. and it's like, yeah, you can have this if you buy this course blah 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 yeah. and it's it's it yeah it, it just annoys me um yeah and also i was gonna i was gonna ask you obviously you mentor or coach people um yeah. outside of trading how do you yeah. think traders can reduce stress like i say so the people that i speak to and the people that i get a good impression that will perform well uh generally they already are financially stable so again, not depending on trading as a financial income stream, mm. then that then straight away is kind of alleviate stress, obviously. Um, lowering risk, I was saying to James yesterday, look, stick a grand in your account, um, a grand, nice nominal figure. Um, you could look to use a grand as zero, but just use 0.5% risk. I know it sounds pathetic. It's five pound risk. You're looking to gain, say, one to three. You're looking to gain 15 pounds for every five pounds you risk. Uh, the way we trade, we scale out methodically. So you hit X, Y, and Z points. And you take a bit of profit, trial your, trial your stock. Take a bit of profit, trial your stock, et cetera. Uh, rule of thumb, generally we have, let's say, 1 to 1.5, take a bit, well, 1 to 1, stop loss to entry price, 1 to 1.5, take a bit of profit, try your stop ever so slightly, 1 to 2.5, again, do the same, and then just try your stop just underneath, take profit, if it breaks the zone, happy days, that's a general rule of thumb, obviously, you've got different, uh, you've got different areas, you've got different key levels, you've got different obstacles and stuff that that position is going to encounter throughout your entry price and where you're going to see take profit, right, 
So mm. naturally, rule of thumb, that's what we look to do. But again, if there's any resistance in between that um, or around that general rule of thumb, then you can adapt it, right? So we just say, look, a grand, you're not going to make a life-changing amount of money off a grand. Um, you're not going to make a life-changing amount of money off three or four grand, especially if you can't trade and you know you're not profitable. So we just say, look, absolutely reduce your risk and use this £1,000 to last as long as you possibly can. Use it to soak up live chart experience, live trading experience, experience the psychological kind of worries and warfare. Um, and by having £5, everyone can deal with £5, can't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Two trades a day, even if you lost both of those trades, you're down five, uh, £10. So that straight away, knowing that you are in control, and this is what I was saying earlier, if you know you're in control and you're only limiting your losses, then you could you could you could have 10 20 days of kind of losing days losing 10 pounds a day because at the end of the day you're going to be nowhere near kind of exposing and blowing your account so that's what i feel i feel people that have got a clear path they're not expecting too much their expectations aren't too high um they don't need the money as a source of income which gives them time to understand look it's a marathon not a sprint um and yeah just to kind of protect themselves and just be aware of what's to come aware of that what they can see um and and, and so on and so forth right yeah Amazing. Um, so my final question yeah. is, what's some non-conventional advice that you would give to a trader that wants to su succeed? And also, where can people find you? Uh, uh, anyone can find me on my Instagram and bits and pieces. I mean, in terms of, kind of trading advice, I mean, uh, absolutely master the basics, I'd probably say, is I'm not talking about strategies or anything like this now. I'm, I'm saying, right, from the very, very start, the way we have our coaching plan kind of ruled out is, uh, or mapped out is um, we just go through rule sets first. So going through rule sets first, instead of jumping into charts and trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to do this, have an identify and have common rules and common uh, procedures that you are going to implement going forward. So you've got a basis to go from, right? So hmm. uh, for example, we always say, look, buy from support, sell from resistance, make sure you're risking consistently. There's no point in risking 1% of trade and then 3% the next trade and then 2% risk consistently. So 1% every single trade or 0.5% every single trade. Um, and then off the back of that, make sure you are risking one to gain three. So you're risking one pound to gain three pound. Obviously, you're not going to realize that whole that full three pound, but by having a minimum one to three, um, let's say you did realize that one to three, uh, you've then got one to 2.2 or one to 2.5 that you average as you're scaling out periodically, right? Obviously, the, the, higher the, uh, the higher the setup, so you might have a one to five. Even if you're wrong, you can be right. So let's say we were selling off, selling off, selling off, and we hit a support zone. Even, even profit taking, institutional profit taking, could see a reversal from that support zone as long as the zone is marked on as a, a, as a true specific price zone. Um, you could see profit taking, which could then push one to one or one to, one to two, and you can still make money before then the second wave comes in and breaks the support. So that's I, I find that's really important. Obviously, just awareness as well, just being aware of like economic data, but having a, having a general bias of U.S. markets, um, GBP markets, Euro markets understanding uh again this is now getting a bit into um a bit of details and stuff but just being aware you don't have to master economic data you don't have to know what gdp inflation data retail sales and all this means just avoid it but if you're unaware of that then you might be on support support might hold and then something supports the gbp the gbp takes off and then all of a sudden you're like oh great my technical analysis played out whereas not really you had your support zone which held great however that was a 50 50 whether this kind of supporting data went your way or not um, and so on and so forth, right? And then just confluences. Um, so the first kind of uh, kind of webinar on our on our coaching program was that. So rule sets, having specific rule sets that you can abide to, uh, to make sure you're on the right path, that you're taking the right processes and, and steps forward. But then also having a reason to take a trade. Having a reason to take a trade would then give you confidence, and confidence uh, or confluences equals confidence, right? Hmm. So just having things to justify reasons, logical reasons for your decisions. Um, but then also, like I say, we don't, a lot of people's trading success boils down to or, um, unsuccess or kind of um, the, the, the lack of success, should I say, boils down to um, kind of emotional based decisions, right? So I feel like a lot of people will be in a position, they'll have everything pretty much in place, they'll be doing things correctly, um, execution's great, um, management not, not, not so great, but the management is to do with emotional decisions, whereas uh, if you've got predetermined decisions, predetermined rule sets, then you're not making any emotional based decisions. You are doing what you have said you were going to do prior to the taking this trade, right? So some people might be sat on, I don't know, they risk 1% to gain 3%. They're currently sat on plus 2%. Great. They're doing really, really well. Um, and then all of a sudden, 
they've got their stop loss at entry price. So there's an element of risk management there and position management. However, then they get stopped at entry price. They haven't taken any profit. And then they think, right, we're back on support. Let's try and buy again. Um, and then they take a 1% loss. So they had the potential to be plus 2% there. Um, mm. Whereas they've now been stopped at entry price. They think, oh, wow, it's plus 2% there. I should have taken that. Right, let's buy in again because it's definitely going to go up this time. And then they buy in again and then they take a loss. So they were plus 2% potentially. And now they're minus 1%. So we have a scaling out rule, like I say, one to one break even, one to 1.5, take a bit of profit. Because in the case that that does happen, and again, working over 20, 30, 40, 50 trades, you'll see these small wins compound. Some of them, sometimes they're not small wins, they're actually quite significant wins. And then if we did come back down to support, you've already banked once or twice on that position, you can then play with profits. So you're still not risk exposed. Um, so yeah, long, long winded answer, but um, I always go off on a bit of a tangent when I'm trying to explain things because I love to give examples and bits and pieces, but um, yeah, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Yeah, that was really good. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming on to the podcast as well. Thank you for your time hey, today. You're most welcome. It was nice to speak to you.